And recording. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Everybody's starting to come in. We'll, uh, we'll let a few more come in together, and then we will be off and running. This is uh, this is webinar number 27 of this series, and we've been uh, we've been going strong, coming up with some uh, some pretty good topics. One of the ones that's been voted on a lot, and uh, we haven't touched on at all, is what we're going to talk about today, which is, uh, you know, CAN 101, Introduction to CAN Bus Technology, and uh, we'll get into that in in just a moment. I just want to uh, talk about some of the details of of things we've talked about in the past a little bit for some of the those of you that are here for the first time. Uh, make sure you open up your question and answer box. It's, uh, there's a Zoom button, Q&A button there. Make sure you open that up. If you have questions about, uh, you know, relevant to the topic we're talking about today and you want, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, Robbie or I to try to give it an answer, make sure you plug it into the, the question and answer box. Other than that, every, uh, chat back and forth with everybody. Loved, loved that everybody puts in uh, their two cents in from in the chat box. Continue to do that. Love that everybody puts in where they're from. I see uh, Boise in Ontario, Canada, and uh, New York and Italy and, and uh, all over the place and love that. Uh, um, the other thing you want to do at the bottom of that is there's a, there's a pull down button that says all panelists if you leave it in the, in the standard spot. Doing the, um, Pulling, you know, clicking on that pull down and, and click on uh, all panelists and attendees, then everybody will be able to see when you type in there. If you just leave it at uh, all panelists, you're just going to be sending it to Robbie, myself, and, uh, and our other AIM staff that are here helping us uh, you know, answer some of your questions. So make sure you change that, and then we'll, 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 you'll be off and running. The um, CAN bus, uh, CAN 101 is where we're going to, where we're going to chat today, and we've got um, um, AIM Sports Technician Robbie Yeoman from, from our California office is going to talk about that. But I do want to start off first with a, with a little bit of a different poll. And, um, and, and, I'm, and we're going to talk about the, um, oops, let me make sure I pick the right one. We're going to start with this one and we're going to, um, we're going to launch the poll right now. To give Robbie a little bit of extra work to, to go on, and this is a subject that we haven't touched on at all, and it's fairly complex, and you know, there's a lot of information that needs to be uh, shared back and forth with that. So I'd love, love for you to, to, to rate your level of CAN experience. The, um, you know, are you just interested, or you can kind of, you know, you kind of understand it, or, or, um, or, or you really got a good handle on it. I'm gonna let that go while we, uh, while we talk about uh, and, and introduce Robbie. And then before he jumps over there and starts to chatting about it, we'll uh, we'll share that with with the results with everybody, and and take a look at it. If it's in your way for right uh, real quick, you can just uh, you know, of course when you once you submit it should go away. So uh, with that, I'm going to I'm going to come over here, and um, uh, and and start the, an introduction of Robbie. Robbie's been here. Uh, Robbie and I I think are the only two that we've been to all 27 of these. Robbie, I appreciate. Uh, Appreciate your dedication. It's uh, you know, it, you know, two a week, and the, you know, there's a there's a bunch of time involved, and I sure sure appreciate it. And then uh, and then to throw a you know a pretty good little topic on you here. So this will be a this will be fun. I'm here to learn a ton as well. This is not my not my uh, not my strength either. So so um, Robbie, a little bit about yourself. What uh, where where you come from? Why you uh, why why are you our can expert, right? No, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and chat about a little bit about what you're going to talk about today. Then I will uh, we'll finish up this poll and share the results. Uh, well, for the last ten years, worked with AIM, um, and it's it's a perfect fit for me. I have two passions: electronics and race cars, uh, and this this marries them together nicely. Um, so I was able to uh, to really grow my my electronics background by um, just in the natural, like starting with repairs and um, answering phone calls and things like that, and and just grew from there. All the different things I'm, I'm considered the the resident nerd now. <laughs> just anything <laughs> that needs to be solved or uh, a weird way to go about things, I, I'm usually brought into the conversation. So, um, but it's it's been a great ten years, and and uh, this is a subject that I've wanted to do for for a long time because I I feel like there's a lot of um, there's a lot of mystery surrounding CAN technology and and there's there's different levels of users. Today will be a very uh, introductory uh, seminar or webinar, so uh, I, I hope to do more. So I'd I'd like to know where everyone kind of sits, and so the polls will be huge for us. Speaking of which, let's end that polling and uh, and let's share the results so everybody can take a look at 
uh, you know, where the, where the topics were. The, you know, again, the, the rate your level of can experience was the, was the topic. And uh, we have two of them that are very, very close. The, but the number one, I have a basic understanding of CAN, would like to know more and how to better utilize AIM hardware. Uh, and then uh, number one, none, but interested in the topic is, is right close there with 35%, the first one with 36. So, and then, uh, you know, I can connect to an OBD2 port, you know, so this, you know, some people have some basics there and then, uh, and then seven and 6% of I can understand CAN comfortable reading or I am a CAN Lord. So the, uh, everybody can kind of see where everybody's at and uh, that, that, that's uh, viewing, viewing the information today. So let me, let me stop sharing those results and put that over here off to the side. The, um, uh, again, as Robbie kind of mentioned, we're, what we're gonna do here today is, is it, it is CAN 101 and it's, and it's, we have an hour right, and um, uh, about. And by the time you, we have to explain some things, we have to kind of get rolling. We're, we're not gonna teach anybody here everything there is to know about CAN, obviously. This is, a, is we are expecting this to be a multiple, you know, episode type of, uh, of a topic. We're not gonna do them all right in a row or anything, but we're going to, to uh, you know, build upon this one to the next one to the next one. I'm gonna have a couple more polls that you're really, really gonna wanna stand and wait for towards the, towards the middle or towards the end here. We're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about and help Robbie plan for the next one. I'm gonna, we have another poll where we're gonna come back and say, okay, we've kind of hit these, these basic points. When do you want to, um, you know, what, what, what are the next few things you might want to talk about related to CAN? And uh, so uh, you know, be, be ready for that. Uh, Dave Armstrong just asked a question, can you do a webinar on engine analysis? The, um, and then somebody gave it a thumbs up. Uh, that is the third poll we're going to do today. We're going to do a little something different on our next webinar. And uh, please hang tight. And um, you know, one, of the, uh, one of the polls is we're, we're going to talk about what we're going to do uh, in a couple of days on Thursday, and you're going to have a choice to pick the topic. So uh, be ready for that. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll do that poll right at the end. So don't, uh, don't run away when we're starting to close down. So the um, uh, perfect. With that said, Robbie, I think that you ought to share your screen and then, uh, and then we can jump right in. I think I've covered everything I need to cover. All right. And we're seeing it fine. So you're off and running. Okay. So I think uh, today we're going to start with um, where our last configurations uh, left off with can output. It's a, it's a great way to send information that we're collecting to another, another device. Um, and here I have built a can configuration. And as you can see, I have a couple of channels here. We touched on on setting up channels. So I have a water temp, intake air pressure, throttle position, and gear, posi uh, gear position. My intent is to send these out to another electronic device. So to do that, um, we, we're initially going to set everything up in our, um, our configuration, just like we normally would. And we can come over to CAN output. You'll see here that we have CAN1 and CAN2. So a uh, little bit of description on these two. CAN1 is going to be our ECU stream configuration. So if you're using a primary ECU, um, broadcasting out on CAN1 is possible, but may not be the, the best approach. CAN1 is the, the physical connection, is located on the 37-pin harness. So that's the flying leads, the CAN high and CAN low that, that you guys see. Uh, CAN2 resides on the 22-pin, so the accessory harness that doesn't come with the hardware, but can uh, be purchased in addition. It's where you get the additional four analog channels and the additional three digital wheel speeds. So for this example, we're going to be writing on CAN2. Um, we're going to send it out. There's just a couple things that we want to touch on before we actually start writing the information. Um, one is the way that the way that this all happens. Um, the electronic lang language is is binary. I'm sure you guys all know binary um, as uh, zero ones or a string of zero and ones that is difficult to decipher. Uh, really, what it is, it's a it's a numerical system that only uses two digits. Um, so it's it's zero or a one. A, a simple explanation. Um, that can be converted easily into a decimal equivalent. Now, decimal equivalent would be uh, the standard counting numbers. That's base 10, it's zero through nine. So zero, one, two, three, it's what we commonly count with. Um, the, uh, the further step up would be hexadecimal. The hexadecimal is, is base 16, and it gets a little bit strange because it uses the same um, zero to nine counting numbers, but instead of rolling into a 10, it goes into an A, and it continues to F. So you have a counting number system uh, of a zero through F. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. So it, with those 
with that, we can we can increase the amount of information that we receive um, without having to add in another significant figure. So it makes it easier for reading uh, information. So for this uh, example, we'll be writing um, our can IDs in hex. So you may see some, some letters in there, E's and A's, um, but also mixed with numbers. You can always convert these. Um, the, the calculator on your computer has a programmer option. So if you go from standard to scientific and then into programmer, you can simply go into programmer and write a hexadecimal um, value and it will give you the binary equivalent as well as the decimal equivalent of that so so converting back and forth is 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 quite easy you don't have to you don't have to memorize it <laughs> that would be you a will. problem yeah. <laughs> you, you will eventually <laughs> <laughs> um, the next is is uh, the can structure so uh, a can frame what is a can frame uh, a can frame consists of a lot of different parts but for the for, for our topic, most of it's standardized. So for our topic, we're going to be talking about the, um, the arbitration ID. So we have um, the identifier of the information. This is, I, I like to think of it as a header. It's a, it's a lookup. So when we see in the arbitration field a value, uh, and for this, we're just going to go ahead and start writing. So um, for our first one, we're going to use can ID 100. Um, this is in hex. You guys, if you feel free to go into the calculator and, and convert that into decimal, um, go ahead. Uh, let's see. So we're going to choose an 11 bits um, arbitration field. This allows us to put up to uh, 7FF in our, in our hexadecimal information. Or so if we, we can do an idea of 7FF if we, if we wanted to, but we couldn't go any larger. Now, if I wanted to go larger, I could extend my arbitration field into a 29-bit header. Uh, that 29-bit header will allow us to write more significant figures in this. But, and and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But for this, we're going to use can ID 100. Um, the DLC. This is part of the CAN frame, and it tells, a, it tells the, the receiving device how many data uh, bytes to expect after the arbitration um, ID. So when we see CAN ID 100 in the data stream, we know to expect eight bytes of subsequent data, and that's going to be the payload. That's where we put our, our analog channels in this situation. Uh, byte order is going to be defining uh, which way we read a, a multi uh, a multi byte message. Do we read it um, the most significant information first? So do we read it like we read a book? Um, you know, from left to right, one thousand one being the significant figure in zero 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 zero, um, or do we read it as zero 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 one and interpret it as as 1000. So there's two different ways to do this. Um, these are commonly referred to as Big Indian and Little Indian or Intel versus Motorola. Um, in this, Big Indian works well for me. It's it's visually appealing. So for that, we'll, we'll focus on this. Um, now to set the frequency, how fast do we want to output this information? This is just like our analog channel section. So um, I want to send this information out at 20 times per second. So I'm just going to select 20, 20 uh, Hertz. With the uh, with that all set, and we're now broadcasting eight bytes of information. They haven't been filled yet, so there's no output selected. And we have our CAN ID set at 100. So our header is set. Now we're ready to get into the the payload data. Getting into the payload data, we can the, the software makes it incredibly easy because we can click on it and we have a couple of different options. The number of bytes. How long do we want the message to be? Uh, it's the output frequency limited on the receiver electronics. Um, the output, so in this case, we get to pick the output type. So you can see that the, the bit rate right here is set to one megabit per second. So since we are the transmitting device, we get to dictate what this, the frequency is. Um, now, if you were to, uh, if I were to send this information out faster at 100 times a second, but I wasn't sampling that data, it would just send uh, double data or triple data uh, of the same, the same value. So if, if I'm sampling at 20 hertz on my analog channels, then I can't send, I can send out at 100 hertz, but it would just give me four values of the same, uh, the same, the same value four times. Um, okay, so for this, we are going to go into the number of bytes. Everything we're going to do is going to be in word format. Uh, word format means that it's it's bite size. So within every byte, there's eight bits. 
uh, you can, there, there is the possibilities to write on the bit level and sometimes it, it makes it easy because you only have a two state device like a check engine light or a, um, an oil pressure light and it's, it only has two states on or off. Uh, but the can output is, is written in Word. Uh, format. So for this, we're going we're gonna to stick with that. We have a couple of different options. Do we want to send out one byte of information? Do we want to send out two bytes of information? Or do we want to send out four bytes of information? Uh, for this, we're, we'll select two bytes. Um, and that will give us enough, um, enough useful values so we, we don't truncate any of the information. Um, what we should what we should touch on is why I, I chose two bytes. I chose two bytes because I intend to send water temperature out. Water temperature, what type of values can I expect? Anywhere between negative 30 and um, 250, 270, that would be realistic values. And the meat, it, of, meat of the range, right, in a, in a water temperature sensor. So you should th be thinking of every one you're going to send out. And, uh, and if you're thinking about steering or you're thinking, in this case, water, think about what the, what, what the range is, and that'll help you understand which, which some of these settings are. Perfect. Um, so uh, the, the reason I didn't choose one byte is because there's only 255 values. So from zero or 256, there's zero all the way up to 255. That's, that's the uh, most amount of numbers we can do that. If you wanted to calculate that, because it's, it's um, base two, it's, it's exponential. There's eight bits. Two to the power of eight is 255. If you include zero, that's 256 unique possibilities. Um, and maybe that'll work for, for water temperature. Now, if I wanted to send a decimal place out, I have to move the decimal place, and now I can only go to 25.5, and that's not going to work for anybody. So when we increase it, because it's exponential, I increase it to two bytes of information, and now I have 65,536 unique possibilities. So just by adding that second byte of information, I have now grown the amount of data I can send um, by another factor of eight. A big change, a big change. It, 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 gets, it gets big quickly. <laughs> um, I'm sure everyone remembers their math class when they say exponential growth or x squared and you just see it start ramping up and um, it starts looking more and more vertical. Yeah. Um, so for this, uh, we're, we'll get back to the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, we want to send out water temperature. This is much like you're building an alarm or much like you're, you're de designing your display. So most of this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we can click on the AD channels and I want to send out my, uh, actually we'll do uh, RPM first. So I'll send out RPM. Um, RPM, I'm not concerned with half numbers or, or decimal places or, or anything outside of, of raw information. So I'm going to keep the multiplier at one this makes effectively no change. The, if I see 3000 RPM on the data logger, we will send out a, the binary equivalent of 3000 um, to our, our receiving device. So it goes to the receiving device. There, there's no modification that needs to be made. So I can, at this point, I can hit okay. Now I'm transmitting RPM in big Indian at 20 times per second on bytes zero and one. And it's as simple as that. We just have to go through and fill these out. Um, and we have a record of it. So the receiving device, maybe they need to, you to write the information, and we'll, and we'll talk on how we're going to how we're going to show all of our work today in a little bit. Um, so I think next up is is water temperature. Now water temperature, uh, we're still use two bytes, um, and we'll just select use channel, and we'll select our water temperature. Now this one. You get a little uh, call out here. It says water temperature uses one decimal place. Set the multiplier at 10 to manage all digits. So we're, we're literally just compensating for uh, the decimal position. We want to amplify the number so that, we can so that we can send it out with a decimal place. There's no decimals in binary. There's no negative numbers in binary um, or, or hexadecimal or, or decimal. There's just, there's no, there's nothing. There's, the concept of negative doesn't exist. So we have to, we have to program for it. Um, in this case, the can output will always send out signed data. Signed data is, is a, a strange topic. So you have um, signed, unsigned, and, and uh, signed bit. Those are going to be the, the most common ways to send information. They're usually denoted in a DVC file or, um, or like an Excel sheet that, that's telling you how the can information is being transmitted as, as like US uh, or U16, which is like unsigned 16-bit integer, um, or S16, uh, signed 16-bit integer. What this does is it allows us to take a positive binary value and 
implement a negative association to it. Um, and if you can think of an unsigned is a straight line, it's a linear progression of the counting number. So we go zero, one, two, three, four, and it goes all the way to the end. In this case, 65,535. It's going to get to the end. Um, and they'll all be positive numbers. Signed allows us to take half of that information and, and think of it more circular. So zero is right next to one, and it's also right next to 65,535. So if we want to go negative, we start counting from the, the maximum position, 65,535 is negative one, and then negative two is, is 34 and 33 and it, so on and so forth. And we meet back in the middle uh, at the bottom of our circle. So it, it allows us to, to anticipate this, this negative response. Water temperature, may be negative. It, it, you may have the need to, to set a negative value, especially if you're using Celsius. Um, so this is, can output is, it's not defined. It's going to send it out as signed information, no matter what you do. Uh, and that's just for, for the negative number. So it's just, just something to, to keep in mind. Uh, so we'll set our, our base 10 multiplier. And now we're broadcasting water temperature out. Um, from here, we can, we can continually add data channels uh, from, from our analog channels list. And we're just gonna keep them all as two bytes to keep things simple. Um, so this would be our intake error. Oh, see, I made a little mistake there. We'll do by four. And we'll use the channel uh, intake air pressure. And it's just telling us it, an easy way to, um, to understand what to do if you wanted the one decimal place of precision. Now for this one, we're gonna, we're gonna not choose that. We're gonna increase it to 100. And the reason I'm doing this is because for me, the decimal point is very significant. I want to, I want to know that I'm at 14.3. I don't want to know, um, and then the extra decimal place will be the rounded function. So I 14.3 and 14.4 may not be uh, a big deal in this application, but it may be in other applications. So I wanted to show you that you can increase the multiplier. Now we, we're compensating for two decimal places of precision. There's always going to be a rounded uh, figure and it's gonna be the, the least significant figure. So if I want 14.3 and to know exactly that it is 14.3, then I want, um, I want my, my, least, my hundredth position to be the rounded function. So we'll go ahead and hit Okay for that. So now we're outputting RPM, water temperature, intake air pressure, um, and we'll throw throttle position in there. So we'll keep it at two bytes and see we, we no longer have the four byte option because there's no, no more payload uh, information that we can send. So we already cut that out for you. And we'll just select throttle position here. And again, go through and manage it as um, we'll do a multiplier of 100 because maybe I, I want to know 65.5. I mean, for me, throttle position is, is best done in a whole number, but um, to show this, it, it's very nice. Um, one thing we didn't talk about is offset. Uh, the offset is, uh, is a way to, if we weren't sending it out as signed information, it's a way to impose a negative value uh, up to a certain negative value um, by adding an offset. So uh, commonly water temperatures won't be done as signed information. They'll be done as, um, a gain with an offset. Now the offset takes your zero and subtracts the offset by it. So it actually pushes your uh, your calculated number back in its um, by the offset. So if I wanted up to negative 60, I could put a negative 60 offset in it. Then when the data logger sent zero, uh, I would interpret it as negative 60. And then the counting would begin from negative 60 to negative 59 to negative 58 up to zero at a uh, at the value of 60 and then and then ahead. So that's, that's another reason to use an offset. Now, uh, the only time we're going to use that is if, if the data logging system or the, the device that we're sending it to requires it. 32-bit floating point, it does not. Um, the 32-bit floating point is like you're talking about like I, I triple C. Uh, it's, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's commonly unused uh, in all of my applications. I've only seen one where where I actually had to use a 32-bit floating point. Um, but there there's a lot of growth in this that's that's happening now as electronics become more prominent and as as we the end users um, start to become more familiar with how electronics uh, talk to each other. Uh, new tools are developed every, uh, we're, we're constantly working on CAN output or, or the, the CAN protocols and just providing new, new tools. So 32-bit floating point is, is a, it's a 
soon to be a possibility. I hope. I, I don't want to. I don't want to tease too much. <laughs> um, so for this, we'll we'll just jump right into the next one. Uh, we do have to finish uh, this one. So for this, I wanted to to show you what a 29-bit uh, message would look like. So for this, we're going to use um, uh, let's say 18 EA 0000. Um, so the this information it comes from J1939. It's like a standard request message, uh, and it's just right off the top of my head. Uh, this is a standard message where uh, this has additional meaningful information. So you have this, you can consider this the priority of the message. Uh, this four, uh, four digit value right here, the EA00 is the parameter group number. And then this is the source address where, where it came from. So we're, we're making this present on, on the global settings. Uh, and we can, if you guys are interested in J1939, we can do a whole hour uh, just on J1939 <laughs> uh, or, or any other CAM protocols. Um, but for this, it's just right off the top of my head. I know it's a 29-bit identifier. Um, and we'll switch to Big Indian. We'll set this. I think I only have five bytes of information that are going to be outputting. And the frequency, we'll keep it at 20 hertz. So we'll just go ahead and plumb in our gear. Now this is only gear only has specific values. Um, so, so to send out gear, um, we are going to only use one byte because we can fit all of the possibilities of, of gear in 255 possibilities. There's no decimal places to worry about. Um, so I can easily send out gear as one byte and save the extra byte of information for, for other things. Uh, because there's no decimal place, I don't need a multiplier. Um, and because I don't need to modify it anyway, well, there's no offset. So we're, we'll send out gear as one byte. Let's see. So we'll just add these right here, battery voltage. Uh, so we can grab. So right now, you'll, you'll notice there's no ECU here. So um, so we're just really pulling from this. Uh, and there, there is a reason for that. We can easily send out CAN information uh, that we're receiving from CAN1 on CAN2. So you can use it as a, an effective hub to, to pull information from one and send to another de device. Um, but I have a very specific reason, which we'll talk about later, um, why I don't have an ECU selected. So here, I'll just select my battery channel. Um, now, this is going to be set with a multiplier of 10 because I care about the decimal point. So and this basically gives us an idea here. Let's see. And for the lateral acceleration, this one is is because I do have lots of negative numbers for lateral acceleration. We've seen lateral acceleration in many of the webinars, um, and they have a positive and negative value, the left hand turns and right hand turns. Um, so this is a great reason to use signed notation. So we, we're sending it out and zero is zero and anything positive is going to be a, our right hand turn and anything negative is going to be our left hand turn. Uh, we'll put the, the multiplier in there as 100 and we've done it. We've now successfully outputted RPM, water temperature. This is ready to send to the device and it will begin transmitting immediately upon, upon receiving the configuration. This will start broadcasting here. So we've dictated the, the bit protocol rate of one megabit per second. Um, that's the transmission speed. We'll send these headers and the following eight byte payload data will be um, the RPM channel, the water temperature channel, and take care of pressure and throttle position. This is this is great for secondary electronics. Let's say you wanted to implement a, a live telemetry system. This is a great way to send it out without having to duplicate sensors, without having to um, piggyback on sensor signals or, or any, anything like that. We, we can just take it, it's a two wire connection. We take CAN1 um, or CAN2 in this case, and we hook it up to our electronic device. We've now built the encoding or the transmission of our data output. Yeah, Robbie has just taken, this is just a big example, right? He, he, he could have built it to, in any way, just so whatever your needs are to, for sending it out as a, as a CAN channel, as a CAN stream, uh, you would pick your channel. So Robbie's just picked these, so don't, don't get hung up on actually what he's done. It's just a, more, of a, more of a great example with a bunch of different types, so that's a, and, and which will be played into the rest of the hour. So nicely done. Um, so we can... Uh... Search switch over now. Um, now that we built this, um, the, all that's left is is just transmitting it to a device. So here we have uh, an MXG uh, connected for for our test. Um, and if I were to transmit this right now, it would begin outputting outputting our information just as as we want it. Um, now, for the sake of our tests, 
Well, I'm also going to show you um, the CAN protocol section. So how do we receive information? In? And in this case, we're, we're actually going to take uh, CAN1 uh, and link it with CAN2. So the physical layer is, is literally our independent CAN bus is just just twisted together on my on my bench right now just so that I can send the information from my analog channel set to out on CAN2 and receive it back in on CAN1 um, and make the dash think that it is an ECU uh, of some type so this this goes another layer deep so this would be if you're if you're connecting to another device you may have to do this as well What's cool about the, the, you doing it this way, Robbie, if, if some of the folks out here that are watching this and they want to, to practice, they could set up their AIM device, create it, and then bring it right back in, create the import, and be able to test everything. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful way of, of, of a teaching and learning tool. Yeah. Um, Antonio, uh, the increasing the multiplier, uh, there's a question in the Q&A. Um, increasing the multiplier doesn't uh, affect the sampling frequency. The, the sampling frequency would be um, maybe maybe the it, it just increases the the amount of numbers that we're sending out so so we're going to send that out and it's just going to be a larger number it, the the sampling frequency won't be affected um, but the the rounding of the least significant figure is affected so the larger I make my multiplier the smaller um, the smaller my rounding function becomes so I can then show one decimal place of precision knowing that there's no rounding happening uh, on that on that value not the frequency that you're increasing or reducing, it's the accuracy of the data that you can get out of it. So mm -hmm. that's the difference. Let's see. Um, okay, so let's get right into building it. So we've gone into our, our CAM protocol section. Now, our CAM protocol section, if you guys wanted to see, my part of my day job is building <laughs> CAN protocols. Um, so I have I have quite a few, uh, but for this, we'll, we'll trim it up and we'll just, this is pre-built in case we run out of time, I can just send it right over uh, and show you guys everything. But I want to show you um, how to build a new custom CAN protocol. So if we wanted to uh, come in and receive information then we can uh, we we have to we have to organize it in some way, and that's that's what I that, that's what this window is all about. So I go to create a new custom CAN protocol, and I can actually add a manufacturer. As you can see, I have AIM in here. I have um, you know a bunch of test stuff and just things things that I'm working on, um, and I can add it now. This shows up in your configuration. It's it's located on your PC exclusively, uh, but it shows up in your configuration section. And that's where it shows up is defined by this CAN device type. So uh, for this, we're just we're going to select a manufacturer as AIM uh, for our webinar test, and we're going to call this uh, CAN 101A. So the CAN device type, ECU and other CAN devices. These are the two that you will see in your um, in your in your configuration. ECU, that's ECU stream tab. So do you want it on your primary CAN bus, uh, referred to as CAN1 or, or ECU stream? Where, where are we going to be receiving the transmission of data? Um, if it's coming on into CAN2, we would select other devices, uh, other CAN devices. This will make it available in the CAN2 dropdown. So in our, in our application, we're going to build a, a primary ECU stream. So we're going to select ECU uh, and we're going to set our bus speed. Now, usually the, the transmitting device dictates the bus speed. So when we connect to an ECU um, or we connect to another electronic device, uh, they, they're already outputting their information and hopefully we can understand what the bus speed is before getting this far. Um, the, the, standard, the standard device IDs for specific manufacturers um, it's it's tough. That gets more into uh, PID messaging or or um, requ uh, request and receive uh, protocols. Uh, there's there's two different functions. There's uh, asking for information and receiving an answer, and there is broadcasted information for other devices to listen to. So in a in a car. Um, you know, a common car that's not protected by a gateway that's controlling all the CAN information, we can tap into it and look at how it's talking to the ABS control module or maybe the infotainment uh, system or or the uh, the creature comfort CAN bus. Um, all of these things are, are you, we can tap directly into them and listen to that information. Uh, that's, that's what we call broadcast CAN. I would say most of our ECU drivers are, are designed around broadcast CAN because there's no, there's no time loss in me asking for information and waiting for the response back. Um, we can do it very, very quickly, but the more requests we make add to 
the um, the time of our of the response. So if I make uh, ten requests, th those ten I have to wait for ten requests to be responded back before I can present data on the on the dash. So we we strive in most of our ECU drivers to use broadcasted messages. They're already there, and we can just listen in at a, at a much faster rate. Um, so some ca common CAN bus speeds: uh, 125. K, uh, 250K, 500K, and one megabit per second. So the one megabit per second is what we, our transmitting device is dictating that, that we set to it to. Uh, 500K is very common and 250K is very common. 125 is not, not quite as common, but these are, these are the most common that, that you will see. Um, and then use silent by default is part of the can frame format. So if we want to make an acknowledgement that we're present on the bus, um, let the, let the transmitting device know that we are there, we would, uh, we would deselect this. Um, if I don't want to make anything known that, that we're tapping in and listening or, or making requests as a, a dummy device, then I would select this and it would, it would re remove the acknowledgement command from the CAN frame. Um, perfect, so now we built our, our protocol and we had this blank screen in front of us. Now we have to start programming. Um, um, let's see. So um, we'll get right into it. Um, first things that we're going to talk to uh, talk about is the filtering bit mask. This would be if you had information in the arbitration field, so the can ID or the header um, that you wanted to omit from from being read. And sometimes in J1939, I'll use this as the source address. I'll pull out the source address by removing um, you know the first the first eight bits of information, and it and you can see it places a zero here. So I'm no longer looking at the source address, um, and maybe I pull out the priority of the message as well. Um, but for 90% of my applications, all of these remain checked. This will filter out um, our our ID and our header. So if we go into add a can stream, um, we're going to pull directly from our um, our configuration of the CAN output. So we'll start with 100. And if you recall, we set our byte order to uh, Big Indian, so Motorola. And now we have uh, one of my personal favorites. I've played with a lot of uh, software and maybe I'm biased, <laughs> but uh, this is very nice. It's very easy to use. I can open and increase and decrease my, my channels, um, move them around, and I don't have to physically type in a start bit or, or the number of bits. I can easily just trim my value visually. And for me, it, it it makes things much, much faster. You a graphic uh, and a, a way of entering the information plus a graphical way of adjusting it. That's a, that's a nice touch. And then you just see some duplicate information here. The CAN ID that we're working with is CAN ID 100. Um, and the byte order is set to Big Indian. Um, our start bit in this case, denoted by the red dot, is uh, start bit 8. Uh, and the, the length is 16 bits. So if you counted all of these, we would have 16 bits of information that we're, that we're working with. So. Um, We'll go ahead and we'll just type in ECU RPM because that was from our example. Um, RPM was on the first two bytes of information. Uh, the short name here, this is what's displayed on the hardware. So this is your, your dash short name. When you select this channel, it's not going to show engine RPM. We can implement a short name. So it just says RPM. Um, you only have four characters to work with. So so choosing, choose wisely. Um, and uh, the, the the number, the function here. This function is incredibly powerful because it assigns um, a, an additional value to this information. So this is engine RPM, and we can actually tell the Dash system that what you're receiving on these two bytes of information following the CAN ID 100 header is um, is engine RPM. What does that mean to the data system? It means that it's automatically going to put it in the SmartyCam function settings. It's um, when we get into Race Studio 3 analysis, there, there will be natural functions. Um, so we can actually call these types of functions and, and make your lives easier. So you don't have to go in and make the manual um, assessment that says, this is my RPM channel. I want to send it to my Smarty Cam. Smarty Cam will say, we have a, an overlay object for RPM. We're going to take the, engine, the function engine RPM and use it. Um, let's see. So we, we set up our function, and you can see that there is a wide list of functions, mm -hmm. many with uh, multiple. And most of these, they, they're also used to set the unit of conversion. So in this case, there's only RPM. So there's no other options to choose from. But if I selected volume, it would be liters, gallons, UK gallons, um, all the different units of measure. Um, max frequency. 
we set it at 20 hertz. So we're going to match the max frequency. So whatever it's broadcasting at, I want to put the max frequency here. Now I can manage it at 20 times per second. When I, if it's uh, engine RPM for this, I want to do that. Uh, on other channels, because I set this max frequency doesn't mean that I have to commit that information to memory. So that goes back to the, um, the other webinars where we discussed uh, setting frequencies. So you, you can set now, I can set up to 20 hertz. So I can set it at one hertz if, if that's what I want to do. But here I want to match it so that I have at least the option of sampling engine RPM at 20 hertz in my configuration. Um, step value is, is it, it uses no interpolation, uh, interpolation from um, point to point. So it's very, very good for using um, like a multi-position um, dial that has fixed position. There's no other values that I'm concerned of. So when I turn my dial, I don't want to see uh, the slow buildup of how slowly I turn my dial. I want it to go from position one to position two. Uh, another great application is gear. Gear, it's, I'm not, I'm not concerned with the time it took me to get from gear two to gear three or, or how long it took to transmit that information. I just want it to go straight up and be um, um, a, a flat line. Uh, the consequences of a mitch, mismatch, um, if sampled at 20 hertz, but the device is signaling at 40 hertz, um, it's not a problem. It's, it just means that we're looking at that data channel at 20 times per second. So it's not, it's not going to affect us. It just sets our upper limitation. We can't look at it at 40 times a second, um, but we could look at it at 40 or 50 or 100. Well, 40 is not an option, but um, we could look at it at 100 times a second, but it's not, it's not broadcasting that information. So we'll go to 20 Hertz. Um, we're not going to use the step value because I do want the information to be, um, I want it to be graphically pleasing when, when we look at this information. I don't want there to be hard steps in our RPM numbers. Um, and we can set this as um, our signed information. Even though we don't expect a negative number, the can output is always signed notation. So we do have to uh, program for it. In our, in our example, we use gain of one. So we just match that here and an offset of zero. And this one's going to take a little bit longer because we're going through every single step. Um, it'll get a little bit faster as we as we move forward. Uh, the encoding values allow me to set a specific um, value, whether it's in decimal or hexadecimal. So if I said that when I saw uh, a decimal value of 1,000 on the RPM channel, I could give it a label, make it say on or off. And this it doesn't make sense. We're not going to be uh, implementing that, but we will in in the gear. Um, but now our unit after conversion. So here's our conversion vector. And it's very simple. We multiply the value by one, effectively making no change. Um, and we have zero offset to worry about it. Now we need to assign a unit. How are we transmitting this information out? In this case, it's RPM. So we'll select that and we'll go into water temperature, which has two different states. So we'll sit here and type in EC water temp. That's going to bother me. <laughs> um, and we'll do H2O temp. We'll set our frequency at 20 times a second. And we will select temperature. And here we have additional functions. So you can see we have water temperature, intake air temperature, exhaust temperature, uh, and just a basic temperature. So if it doesn't conform to any of these functions that we may use, um, then we can just select a, a, a raw temperature and make the function association later. Uh, but the water temperature here, will now it will, it will send this data channel to our SmartyCam for us because it's, it's coded as a function of water temperature. We use it in other aspects of the configuration. Um, so the unit after conversion, um, in this case, we, we did a gain of 10. Um, so now we're going to do the inverse. We're multiplying the value in can output by 10 to, to give us that decimal point. Uh, when we receive it in, we need to apply the inverse. So in this case, it'll be a 0.1. Whoops. It'll be a 0.1 value, and we'll set ourselves for signed and no offset. Now the unit after conversion this is what you have to pay attention to. What, how did we, when we converted this, what was our, our unit of measure? What, what were we using this conversion to assign a, a, a unit of measure to? Celsius or Fahrenheit? I chose Fahrenheit. So in this case, my unit after conversion is Fahrenheit. So I need to tell the data system um, that the information after this conversion is applied is in a base unit of Fahrenheit. 
in most applications, it's Celsius. Celsius is, you know, it's a nice base 10. Um, it, it helps um, with the number crunching, but I did not select that, so we'll do Fahrenheit. Now, the default channel here, this is what is uh, default applied in your configuration. When I select an ECU stream, do I want them all to be Celsius values or do I want them all to be Fahrenheit values? Um, this, this makes your life a lot easier because you don't have to go through your ECU stream tab and manually select from KPA to PSI or manually select from Celsius to Fahrenheit for your preference. Uh, this will allow it to automatically uh, pull the the default. We'll, we'll, we'll do additional conversion to get it into the base unit that you prefer, but it's very important to understand what the unit was calculated after the conversion. So common mix matches are applying Celsius to a Fahrenheit number, um, and then when we when we show Fahrenheit, we apply a conversion factor to it, and now your numbers are way off. So in Celsius, it's reading Fahrenheit, and it, and it appears to be accurate, but uh, when you switch it to um, Fahrenheit on the configuration, it it's multiplies it by 1.8 and adds 32. Yeah, you know, we always got to watch our units, right? In everything we do, especially when you're sending data across this way and, and bringing it back in, we got to watch our units, always important. Um, so we're just, we're just going to cruise through this and we'll do intake air pressure. While you're doing that, uh, there was a question in there that talked about, and, 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 and while you discussed it, go ahead and keep on typing, Robbie. The, um, we talked about the, the, the fellow says the motor is 15,000 RPM per second. In other words, it, it's very, very quick changing of, of a particular channel that this person's after. And if that's the case, and if you, you have a need to, to gather data at a faster rate, you need to send it out at uh, 100 samples per second or 500 and then bring it back in at the rate that you want to. So what's kind of cool about this is it allows you to, uh, to, to set those things based on, uh, based on your need. Our need here was, uh, you know, was 20 or 50 samples per second is going to cover everything we need to do here. So just wanted to answer that one really quickly out of the chat box. So if you think um, uh, 24,000 RPM, uh, that would be, I don't know, 400, maybe 400 and some change um, hertz. That's not, we can't manage that type of max frequency, but nor do we have to. Uh, the ECU, is the, the transmitting device is dictating how it's sending us the information. So while we may not get every single, we can interpret the information between each data point, just like we do with any of our other data uh, data channels. We, we, we connect the dots. We, we draw the slope of the line that it took to get from this point to that point. Yeah. Okay, so we, we've gone and set our max frequency, um, our signed data. Um, the gain is, let's see, does anybody remember what gain we did? I think it was 100 it was. for the additional decimal place. And we are just cruising along. And you can see that it, it does take time. Um, it's a labor of love. <laughs> Most people will tell you that reverse engineering or building um, uh, can database files is, it's tedious and it, 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 there's a lot of room for error. The good thing is knowing how, where these the common errors are, um, it helps. Uh, it helps you can go back and you'll, you'll start noticing specific numbers all the time, like 65,535. If I see that, I know that I haven't managed my signed correctly. It means that it walked to the, uh, the beginning of, uh, or the end of the scale of the, the byte, and I, I didn't manage for it properly. And you'll see, you'll see half byte information or full byte information, and you'll commonly pick these numbers out um, and just be like, okay, I know exactly where the mistake is. And that just comes I, I know time. where to go fix it, yeah. Yep. <laughs> see here, so we, I think we'll do. We'll give this a short name of TPS. And uh, this one was, let's see, uh, we'll do percent. There we go. And we'll do percent to throttle load. And you can see that I've selected percent. There's no other unit of measure that I, I can use for percent. So it, it trims that out for me. And I set my throttle with a gain of 100, um, max frequency of 20 hertz. And we'll set this as signed. So here we have our receiving end or encoded um, or decoded end of the data already taken care of. So can output is the transmission or the, the encoding of data into a, 
a, a binary stream and the, um, the CAN protocol section, the ECU driver is the receiving of that information and the, the decoding of that binary information into valuable units of measure. So we're basically taking it from computer language and giving it uh, a, a unit of measure that makes sense to us. Um, we, st we still have one more stream or one more uh, uh, header to manage and I, we use the uh, 18EA00. Okay, and duplicate information here. Uh, we'll do our start bit. I think uh, the next was gear, and the function we'll set to gear. So most of the things are already in here. Um, here we'll do gear. Next frequency we'll do 20 hertz, and I don't need to worry about. Uh, yeah, we'll do signed, and now we're going to set an encoding value. The encoding value uh, allows us to anticipate the information that we expect to see here and apply a label to it. Now this label could easily be um, one, it could be two, it could be, um, it could be A, it could be uh, R and N. So in this, it's important that we go through and we set the encoding value. So um, it's sign notation. So when I see um, 255, that label output, that's reverse. When I see uh, 250, uh, 254, so you see we're counting backwards in our one byte of information. Um, let's see, that's drive. And in 253, that is going to be our park value. So if we had a manual transmission, we could we could then basically say when we get a, a decimal value of 255, that's our reverse. And when we get a decimal value of 254, that's our drive. We get a value of 253, that's our park. And we're, we're gonna show this label here to you. We're not gonna show you these, these values uh, on the left. We're gonna take that and apply the label to it. I can then go in and program for, um, I think zero is neutral. And this one, it's, I like to see neutral. Um, some people like to see zero, um, but in this case, we'll just we'll just do a label n, and we'll do one, two. What's cool about this is it's it's your, it's your preference, right? You can do, mm -hmm. you can do whatever uh, you as an end user wants to see. And this is this is also um, very good with uh, uh, multi-position switches. If if your multi-position switch isn't numerical, it's alpha. Then you could say, um, when I see this value, it's A. When I see this value, it's map B. When I see this value, it's map C. Uh, you don't have to keep it in this um, this digital notation. So we got six-speed gearbox, and for these labels, I'm just going to do two, three, four, five, and six. So. So this is how we're going to output that information. Um, what I what I really like about this is that I can write it in whatever I'm comfortable in, and it naturally <laughs> switches between hexadecimal and decimal um, automatically for me. So you can see that 255 is is FF. That's all binary bits in the on position, and FE is is all but one in the on position. Um, so we're basically counting backwards, and you can see it's FF, FE, FD, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. You talked earlier about a little, uh, you know, little calculator is going to be available on your phone or online. It's built into the into the software as well, so that's kind of handy. Mm -hmm. um, a next, another one that um, is battery voltage. Let's see. Put my DC header in there, so I know where it's coming from. And we'll go into voltage. Oops. 20 hertz, signed, encoding. And this had a 0.1. And that's it. So it, with just a little bit of practice, it can become much it was, faster. Yeah, it becomes very quick once you understand it. And uh, the lateral acceleration. See, I, I, I built a, a whole ECU protocol on this um, just in case I didn't run out of time, but um, 
I, th I think we we nailed it. We we yeah, have now received good. the information in there. So um, the lateral accelerometer we did uh, 0 0.01 because we multiplied it by 100, and we can set this as acceleration, and we can do our lateral accelerometer. Uh, we'll set this as signed, and there you have it. We now can save this and it will show up in your database just like your configurations do um, and you can go in and edit it at any time just simply clicking on here and coming in and making any edits that either were mistakes or or modifications in the future and now we can uh, we can go into the live measure so i've already i've already taken this and transmit it to um, an mxg so just a brief explanation here is I have my analog uh, and digital channels up at the top here under this master section. Uh, and then I have the receiving end um, down here. So these should all be exact replicas of, so I'm, I'm taking the analog information, I'm transmitting it out on CAN2. Uh, we define the headers and we define the payload information. Now um, we built a, uh, uh, a decode, uh, a receiving protocol to take that, that binary information and convert it back into a unit of measure that, that we, we can understand. So now we're seeing our ECU. Our ECU is now active and we're, and we're getting information. I can actually come in here and uh, force a channel value. So we can set uh, the 16-bit float point. This is, this is where you want the information to start. So we could say, I want it to start at 1,000. And I want to do steps of 100. So we'll do OK. And you can see that my engine RPM and my ECU RPM are directly related. So it is interpreting the information exactly as I want to. So this is a great check if, uh, if you have the means to, to control um, the sensors or control the, the device itself to send out a specific information and make sure that you're, you're receiving it in the correct way. Um, one of the nice things is gear here. We can force this channel value. Uh, we'll say that is zero. We'll start that there. Um, We'll stop forcing this and we'll turn them off just to make it a little easier. So now we have our, our gear. So you see, I didn't program for eight, nine, um, seven. So it's, it's not looking for that encoded value. I have no value to, to implement into it. So I can then, once I start going down into the encoded values that I have, it starts directly relating to uh, gear three, gear four, and you can see it's being reported here. And we go down to one. Neutral is neutral. This would be our zero point. And then we start going negative again to 255, but now we're implementing our reverse and our drive and our park IDs. Very cool. So, Very cool. So it looks like we, we, we did it. Um, everything's reporting correctly. Um, see, this is a little bit of a rounding issue here. If we, if we wanted to actually resolve this, we could, we could simply increase the, uh, the amount of decimal places that we transmitted out. Um, intake air pressure is the same. You can see we're negative 19.9 and a simple force value um, to, let's say, so do 10 pounds of boost. I'll do step one here. So now we're at 10. And you always want to pay attention to the rollover positions. So where are we going to, where are we going to have issues? We're going to have issues where we go into the negative numbers because they need to be programmed for very specifically. Um, so we're going to check negative numbers and we're going to check our maximum positions. Um, um, yeah, Kevin, uh, the, the the physical connection is is really simple. I have my 37 pin harness with CAN1 uh, flying lead and I have my 22 pin harness CAN2 flying lead. These are two independent CAN buses. Um, so I can take information from my analog channels and um, I'm sending them out on CAN2 to be received in on CAN1. And the physical connection is as simple as twisting the two wires together. So CAN high goes to CAN high and CAN low goes to CAN low. Yeah, again, something you're not gonna do in, in your normal world, but it, 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 like Matt mentioned as well, it's just a great way of, of you got your you got a system, a name system with, with this, this capability, be able to build these and test them on your own and, and practice and, 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 and uh, find your mistakes. So it's, uh, it's a great little tool, I love it. Well, um, 
at, at this point, we we've done it. And I know this was this may seem overly simplistic to some, but but my my hope with this webinar was to bring everyone up, like build the base. Um, and and I would love to do more of these. So if you guys if you guys want more, or if you guys have a, a specific idea for for a good webinar, I only had an hour, and and we just basically ran right up into that <laughs> the end of that hour. It's very difficult. It's a, such a deep topic. The, the uh, Robbie, there's a couple of questions that, that are over there. I, I think what I'd like to do now is, uh, is have you maybe uh, take a look at those couple of questions from Eldon. I'm going to throw up a poll, and this one's going to take a little bit of thinking from your guys' part, so we're just going to let this run while you're answering those questions. And um, uh, I, I thought about this, and I thought, you know what, when we, when we get done with this kind of this 101 thing, and you'll have to, there's a scroll bar there on the left, so that we have 10 different questions there. What, uh, now that we've covered these basics, what are your top three topics you'd like to see covered in the next webinar? Multiple choice, you can pick any of the three, uh, any of them. We're, I actually can't limit you at three. If you wanna pick four, you're, uh, you're, you're able, but kind of try to limit it to that. What other things would you like to see? What are the next step for Robbie's, uh, you know, uh, CAN 110 or CAN 200 or whatever we wanna count the next one, right? But uh, Robbie, take a couple of questions there. Uh, maybe you can kind of cover some of those as, we're, as folks are vote voting. Uh, can open, I have worked with uh, before, and and while it may not seem intuitive now, uh, there it, it it's a harder subject to digest. But I think we can actually get to um, to a point where we can discuss the the transport layer and the uh, the data link layer um, of can open. How how we would interface with them. So um, we we can Elton, um, but it's it's soon to come. I promise. Yeah. Something else we can talk maybe about in the future as well. And then the second one, value scaling is using conventional simplistic approach. What about the support of fixed point notation? Um, fixed point notation in can output um, right now, as as we're growing the can output section, there's there's no way to to really kind of manage that fixed point notation. However, on the east on the receiving end side, we can we can easily manage the the fixed point notation. Um, so if if you have a device that is transmitting that, we can we can manage for it in the receiving end. But to send it out, uh, this sending it out, it's it's very uh, it's very structured right now. But we have we have big plans for for increasing the I don't want to say complexity, um, increasing the, the ability of it, what, what we can allow people to do with, with the can output. Um, but, but timings, we, if you notice, we didn't have anything related to timings um, in, our, in our can output. And I think that is one thing that we will be addressing first and foremost. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're doing a lot right already, but uh, Robbie and our, and our friends from Italy that uh, are helping us write the software or doing the software part uh, are always looking for ways to improve it uh, as well. So we will continue on looking for there. Uh, as you're continuing to vote, uh, please continue on. A, a lot of you have voted, so I, I think we're probably close. But Rob, Robbie, if you could handle Todd's question yeah. there, and then I'll, then I'll close up and share the results of our question. Yeah, one of the... Uh, one of the the webinar. I, I didn't address it directly, uh, but one of the uh, one of the poll options is reverse engineering CAN data on a vehicle. Like I, I'd, I'd love to do it. Uh, I just I need you guys to watch it. Sometimes this can be a, an overly dry subject. Um, you know, I, I just hope that you guys are getting everything out of it, and and we can certainly um, we can certainly tackle something like that. How how you, how I read information. It's it's different for everyone. The the tools that I use, uh, and it's that's a maybe two or three webinar series just just doing <laughs> some some basic can sniffing it would be outside of our software um but i can show you how i do it okay perfect uh let's uh let's let's i'm gonna end the polling and then let's share the share the results and let's see what people want to to see in, in our in our next versions here is the uh the, the sharing of the poll results the um the number one <laughs> ironically the one you were just talking about reverse engineering can data on a vehicle was 58 percent of the folks selected that as one of the options these are uh, these are uh, fairly close to the, uh, the next one it's actually a tie for the next one which is obd2 and pid uh, messaging format and creating ecu drivers using can protocols was the uh, was the next ones and then uh, you know the more detailed information on the can output was uh, was the next one we 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 will study these um uh, these results uh, at some length, Robbie will, I'm sure, and then begin to make a plan for our next hour's worth of, uh, you know, our, our CAN webinar uh, mini-series inside of the other series. So 
I appreciate all of the votes there, Robbie. You got a you got a, a pretty good chunk of uh, information there to uh, to chew on, right? Uh, yep. In the future, already got so. my already got my my gears rotating yeah, on how exa exactly exactly how to get this info out to you guys. Perfect. I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stop sharing those results just so they get out of the way for folks that are uh, that are in that's in the way there, and um and that and that and that kind of um. Uh, in Robbie's piece of it there, but I did uh, tease everybody just a, a, a little bit earlier that we were going to, we were going to talk about uh, our, our next webinar in a in a in a in a little bit different way this time. I've we've we've always um, talked about uh, upcoming webinars, and I always announce them at this point of the time. But I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna open up a, 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 a another poll right now while we kind of talk about some of the other training things that are available. And, uh, and we're gonna do something a little bit differently here. Um, in fact, let me wait until I get to that slide. We, we have all the, the e-training videos out there on YouTube. Uh, this, uh, this is our 91st video that we've placing up on, uh, on YouTube when, when, when this one goes up in the next hour or so. So uh, anytime you wanna look back, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this one, things were gonna come pretty hot and heavy on this one, especially. So the, um, uh, the, uh, we, and we did that on purpose. So if you if you if something went past you really quickly, or you were thinking about something else, and you and you maybe missed the detail, boy, go check it out. This one will be up there and active and uh, available for you to take a look at within an hour or so. So so uh, always visit that YouTube site. It's uh, there's just tons of great information there. The uh, we're 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 heading out to the tracks more and more, and I and I and I really hope that all of you are as well. I know uh, racers are just kind of built that way. We want to get out there and and uh, and do what we need to do. We don't like sitting around in our uh, in our homes or our, our businesses. So uh, if, if you're out there, make sure you look for us. Uh, if not, give us a call at uh, you know for for customer support. It's it's what we're uh, what we're here for. The uh, the next webinar. The next webinar, I, you know, we, we have an opportunity right now that uh, you know, everybody's getting super, super busy and and, uh, and we had to, uh, we had an opening for this coming Thursday for the July 2nd one. I'm going to, I'm going to throw up a, a, a webinar topic poll. Let me launch it real quickly. And you make the call. I, I now I, I, since I have zero time to prepare. I, I needed to kind of limit this down a little bit on ones that uh, that we could choose. And you only get one choice of this, by the way. It's not multiple. So you need to make your call. Uh, start voting on that. And, and one of those four things is what we're going to cover on Thursday. And uh, I'm not even looking over there. We're, you make the call. The uh, And then I will, we will sit down. Uh, I may bring somebody in. I may, I may handle it myself. We'll, we'll see, uh, see what the topic ends up. And uh, we're going to do it. And um, if you have something else that I maybe you know, uh, totally miss and you think maybe I ought to think about, go ahead and throw it into the chat box and, uh, and we'll start to add those up. But these are ones that I know I've been getting emails on and I and have been kind of showing up in some other polls, but we haven't done yet. So these are ones that I think uh, you know, might, be, uh, might, might be fun to, to do. So um, continue on with that. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna let that go for a little bit because everybody's thinking about it. We're gonna go to the last slide and, uh, and then we'll, we'll bring that uh, results back here in just a moment. Um, here's some contact information. I know on this CAN 101, we, again, we went through some stuff fairly quickly. You're gonna, it's gonna create some questions. And uh, as Jay asked on the, in the question and answer, Robbie, what is your email? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, th there it is. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, when it comes to these questions, if you if you you can email me or CC me, but uh, uh, I I was learning along with all of you today, so it's uh, this is not a strength of mine either. So uh, I, I've been I've I've been looking forward to this one as well because uh, it's just uh, something that uh, I want to learn as well. So keep that in mind. There's Robbie's contact information. I appreciate all the all the hard work that he put into to getting ready for this. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and end the in the um, uh, polling and let's 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 share the results and there let's see, did it show up oh sharing poll results yep there there you go the um the the topic that we're going to talk about uh next next week is going to be the um, initial data analysis and the kind of the way that I talked about it was you have uh, you have 20 minutes of data analysis time you've gotten out of the car you've got a drink of water you you, you had a fight with your buddy that hit you in turn two all, all this stuff is now done and you have time to look at your data so uh, what what, uh, what what is it that we would like to look at in the uh, uh, the initial data analysis you have 20 minutes of time what's first where, where do we go it's going to take us more than 20 minutes because we're going to talk about the different things. But uh, what I'm going to do is bring up some data files. I don't even have a clue yet where we're going to head with it. I got I got a data prepare, and uh, and and show some data. 
and then uh, and then I'd love to some of the questions and answer box. I'm looking forward to that. People can throw out some ideas, and we will we will walk our way through a, an initial data analysis thing. We've talked in other webinars a lot about different little steps and different things you can do, but uh, I will give you my opinion on uh, looking over some data and probably a couple different data sets just so we you know some repetition to it as well. So looking forward to that. I appreciate everybody's uh, everybody's vote there. And the other ones uh, I, I did see. Uh, uh, this was an unfair poll. All topics are really good. Um, you know, kind of the point of the poll, right? Uh, I, I wanted to make sure whatever we ended up with was a good topic too, right? So, so I, I, I do, uh, that does, is not lost on me. So we'll, uh, the other ones though, will be probably future, future webinars as well, especially the, um, the engine RPM analysis and my favorite math channels. I just listed a couple of examples. There's some pretty neat things you can do beyond some of the basic math channels we've talked about in other webinars. And I, th I think that would be another interesting topic just to, to throw some of those out there. So I appreciate it. I appreciate the uh, poll. Let me, uh, let me stop sharing those results so they're out of the way. And uh, the, uh, again, Robbie, thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. Is there, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add as we're kind of closing this one down? Uh, I was worried about this one. Um, <laughs> like I said, sometimes it could be a dry subject. Um, I know I talk to my wife about it all the time. Um, and she's just, you could see it, it just glazes over and she's just probably doing his thing. Um, so it's nice to find a, a lot of like-minded people. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do more. Absolutely, and uh, and you will because it's uh, you're very good at it. To, you know, while you, I know everybody's nervous, I'm always nervous when I do these as well. But uh, you, you did a good job, as Peter just said. You brought it to life, and and you made the uh, you made the examples fit um, you know, s some practical examples. So it uh, it worked out very well. Thanks again, Robbie. I appreciate it. Thanks everybody for coming. We uh, we do have uh, our, our next uh, webinar, which will be initial data analysis. That's what we're going to call it. And uh, and I look forward to seeing you all here on on Tuesday. And when and and we will hit it. And I will be asking for your help as we do it, because since there's not much time to prepare. So, thanks everybody for coming. I appreciate it. And uh, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. <laughs>